everybody. Thank you for joining me for today's leadership development conversation. Today's conversation, we're going to focus on the senior pastor's role in shaping a leadership development culture. And I've got a friend of mine who I, I could not get a better uh, guest for this particular topic. It's a friend of mine, Pastor John Pierce. Uh, he and his wife, Danielle, uh, lead C3 Powerhouse in Australia, in the Sunshine Coast. One of my favorite places in the <laughs> world, John. Oh, my <laughs> goodness gracious. Uh, beautiful, beautiful area. And uh, John uh, and Danielle have been pastoring that church for over 20 years. He's also the executive director of C3 Global, uh, where which uh, Phil Pringle started uh, years and years ago. And it's a, a global church planting movement. And uh, so John has his hands in that and travels quite a bit uh, with that responsibility while leading a multi-site church uh, at the same time. And so, uh, and John, you are a new author. Am, am I right? On? I know you got a new book out. It's true. I'm a first time author, Mac. I've been inspired by you. It's, it's uh, a, a book about a biblical approach to finances called The Wills of Financial Blessings. So yeah, just released that. Uh, people said it was like having a baby. Uh, my gosh, what a, what a process, 20, 20 years of kind of preaching and concept that I put down on paper and it's, it's gone really well. So it's available on Amazon if anyone's interested. Thanks. Yeah, mate. On Amazon, you guys got to check it out. And uh, because John brings a biblical perspective, but also you've got a background in uh, uh, accounting and marketing yes. and yeah, yeah, I got a business, business degree and I've run my own business and still do for 30 years with us. These days, it's only a couple of hours a month, really. Yeah. Um, that I spend on it, but yeah, so it's not a theoretical theology book. It's very scripturally based, but it's, it's very practical based on my own experience over years. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I would expect nothing less from you because you are so down to earth, uh, practical. Uh, Thanks, man. I first met John and Danielle, uh, in 2019, you reached out and said, yep. Hey, uh, I've heard, heard about you and, uh, we're interested in doing leadership pipelines. So, I flew over and my goodness gracious, you guys hosted Cindy and I so well. I mean, we were blown away uh, at how just hospitable, loving, graceful your, your team was. And Cindy and I had a blast. And then we got to come over and hang out in your home. Yeah, you let we loved us, it. You let us use your car and, 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 and learn to drive on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> Danger for everybody. <laughs> no, we loved it. We loved having you with us. I'm glad it was a great experience. We want to get you back. Uh, now the world's opening up. But it was, uh, it was a defining kind of week um, process for us. And the connection's been just beautiful, Mac. Oh, uh, yeah. S -s same here. And, John, I tell people all the time, that week with you, because we were five days uh, intense work. We, dr on this. we drilled in, man. We drilled in. It was awesome. Yeah. And, and so I got to watch you up close and personal. I got to watch you lead with your staff. And uh, bef before I dive into the questions, um, th there are two things that stuck out to me. You know, you you're a phenomenal leader. I mean, to be able to. Thank you run a multi-site church, run a business and, uh, you know, uh, help Phil lead the, uh, C3 global movement that, that takes a, you know, a lot of leadership capacity, There's some spinning plates there. Plus my, <laughs> my, my wife, she's got expensive tastes and she loves to me to spend time with her. And so just, no, actually she's awesome. We, we love hanging out. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if you're extremely talented leader or just crazy, but I, I saw, I saw a very talented leader because, Here's two things that stood out to me about your leadership. Number one was you were collaborative, but decisive. Um, you know, the leadership pipeline process, very collaborative. And there were times you would step up and you go, okay, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Here's what we're going to do. And I have never seen a pastor be so collaborative and decisive. There were times I would go, Okay, well, we can wait on that. And you go, no, 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 we're going to make a decision right now. And I love that. The second thing that I just walked away going, wow, this guy's a great leader, was you're empowering. Now, there are a lot of leaders you can go, oh, yeah, they're empowering. But what it was totally different with you. I saw you in, in moments go, okay, you're the right person to do this. 
I want you to do this and run with this. And it didn't matter what their position was. You were looking for the best person to accomplish the job, regardless of right. what the titles were. And I remember you at one point, I was floored because I'd never seen, you know, a pastor do this in this role. You, you looked at Ken and you said, Ken, you're going to lead the content portion. You're going to be the project leader for that part. And Ken was a volunteer leader who was there participating. And I was like, man, I mean, he didn't choose a staff person. He chose a volunteer because of Ken's background. Mm -hmm. He was the perfect person for that. The so, perfect person and has done a phenomenal job in helping us implement the, the whole approach that you brought to us to take on board. So very kind of you, Mac. Thank you for those observations. I'm going to oh. watch this video myself a few times just for encouragement. <laughs> Thank you. S send the first five minutes to your team. <laughs> All right. So, John, let me ask you this. What, what is the senior pastor's role with the leadership pipeline? You've been doing this for, you know, three years or so now. Yeah. What's, what yeah. would you say the senior pastor's role is with the leadership pipeline? Well, look, if I just give a little bit of context to the why and then I, and understand that. So I've been, I'm an intuitive leader. Like I am a strategic leader. I tended to think, Mac, that most leaders would be like me. Therefore, most leaders, um, I'm looking for the gifted natural leaders. And then probably our approach was more, we have a need. Who's the next sort of most gifted available person and dump them in that area and train them on the go. And because that's worked for me a lot over the years, that's kind of how I've grown and led and, and sort of, yeah, stretched. And I kind of had that approach to leadership. Well, look, leadership development's a strong word. Leadership dumping is probably more reality of the way we kind of did it. So that was the, that was the, the background and, you know, better than that, but, but really there, there wasn't a strategic approach to, a, to build and develop reluctant leaders, uh, people who aren't natural leaders, but who could grow as becoming disciples, becoming leaders. So that was, I needed to personally start with a mindset shift. And so if I was to talk about that, I would think the senior pastor's role in the leadership pipeline is really to have a, a clear understanding of, of the culture that you're trying to create and to be the champion. You cannot delegate this um, and to, for someone else to be the leader of the church in leadership development. You can let someone be the champion. You can let someone help drive it, keep people accountable. But if, if it's not something that's deep in your heart uh, that you want to develop leaders. So for me, I would say, the, the senior pastor's role is is to cast the vision for it, to be on board for it, uh, to make sure you're positioning people really well, in, in the right people in the right areas. So that that would be that would be it. It's a little. We've heard the the concept over the years of of connect groups or cell groups or life groups or whatever you want to call them. If the senior pastor is not into those, then it's probably not going to work in the church. And I would yeah. say that primarily with leadership development. If the senior pastor is not into it, then it's going to just be a department and it won't become embedded into the culture and life of the church. So that's where I'd start with that. Yeah. And, and that's something I saw you do when I was on site there that week. You were constantly pointing toward the why yes. and, and, and the results that, you know, hey, guys, this is why we have to think this way. And yes. you were you were so authentic and real and saying, Hey, we've not done this well in the past, but this framework's giving us something. And guys, here's where we're headed. You were so passionate about it. And uh, yeah. And, and look, knew we needed it. Knew it's a key missing ingredient in the life of our church. We'd, I would say we had a, a stream, but we need a river. And yeah. so we needed to really intentionalize. And that's what I love about what you do, Mac, how, and the way you train and the fruit of what you've done, the heart behind it, the strategy behind it, it, it is so doable, uh, starting small and building over a period of time. So we're now three years in. This year, we have uh, on two locations, we have 77 leaders who have either finished apprenticing this year or are currently being apprenticed. And that's, you know, that's happening in groups of uh, 
three or four or five at a time rather than one big classroom where we've got to get everybody in the one place. So the whole any time, any place, any pace mindset uh, is really good. And I, can I say that that in terms of the senior pastor's role, I've listened, watched, read your stuff, revisited it. So it's it's not just a, it's not out there. I've internalized the language. Some of it I've put our own cultural language around, but. You know, and so I'm looking to embed that language and culture into our staff, into our team, into our volunteers, and and into our yeah the, the broad culture of our church. Yeah, and, and watching you on social media, I have seen those efforts. Uh, I've seen you do that. What what are some things that you've done personally to help shape a culture of leadership development? Yeah. Okay. So I I would say it's one of the things I I've done is I haven't really in the first three years made it a major Sunday focus. It I've kind of because we're trying to build a ground up culture. It's been a more behind the scenes with staff, key leaders, volunteers, rather than. Uh, hey church, we're all about a leadership pipeline. You know, this year we've started to let that pop publicly. But so I would say I've really worked hard. We developed a leadership pipeline playbook for our team and took a lot of what you've trained and contextualized it for us. And I would in staff meetings over the last three years continually ask questions. How do we develop leaders at C3 Powerhouse? And I'm trying to embed those three lines. Uh, You know, what are the layers of leadership in our church pipeline so that everybody knows those? We did some great work with you, realized that our structure was messy and we just kept adding things to our structure and we didn't have the consistency of language that a pipeline needs. So in that week you were with us, we basically re-simplified our structure down and, you know, we had a team for everything, Mac. We would, if we needed, if we needed something, we're like, let's just start a team and let's just start. And it just didn't fit a clear structure and it was confusing and messy just for our staff, let alone for our church. So we really simplified our structure in and we uh, clarified our language of the layers of leadership. And that's been really important for us. So I think I'm the driver of it. I've probably two things that I've done. So we've used, this is where we landed. We developed leaders through preparing people for apprenticing, through apprenticing, equipping them through huddles and investing them through continuous coaching conversations. That's our, That's how we develop leaders. That's really you helped us get to that language. We adjusted the last line 18 months in to really reflect how we're going. And, and so I'm, I, I do those things particularly. I don't do a lot of apprenticing personally these days, but I run a huddle with the top 12 leaders in our church. Every month I follow the format of the huddle. Uh, we have coaching cards for all of our huddles, you know, so they know what I'm doing. <laughs> they know exactly what I'm doing in that, that kind of scenario. So we've kind of really take, we've bought into the whole process, but it, but made it there. So, so this is what I do. I run a huddle with our crop top uh, 12 leaders personally. Uh, and then I run a leadership pipeline meeting. I didn't do it probably for 12 months. We had a gap of 12 months where I think we probably stalled a little bit. We, you know, we, it, we trickled along, but July last year, I instituted a leadership pipeline meeting monthly with those 12 leaders, asking the questions and putting it up on the screen for all, so like group accountability, not me one-on-one. Yeah. So, okay. In the worship department, how many, who's apprenticing right now? Who's completed apprenticing? Great. Okay. In the, in the youth department, who, who's, who's apprenticing at what level, we, we look at our depth charts once a quarter, but really there's that whole, oh, okay, so you've activated these guys to leadership six months ago, but they haven't been apprenticed. Uh, how come? What's going on? So it's just nicely, yeah. but the power of the, the focus of that meeting and accountability uh, and then coaching around that continuously. So that that's probably a couple of things that we've really done. I, I visit huddles that other leaders are running just to try to go and coach myself on the huddles yeah. um, or, or run those. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm all into it. And you, <clears throat> your involvement in your visibility involvement in is huge in shaping that culture. And then I love that the accountability that you're bringing by asking yes. those questions in that team culture is, 
absolutely huge. I mean, that is just going to shape. Hey, this yes. is the way we do things. This is this, is this is important enough to, to you know. And there's a, a great leadership saying. We've all heard it, it. We need to inspect what we expect. Yeah. So I expect the ministry directors in our church to be embedding the leadership pipeline into their ministry area of coaches and leaders. I, I expect that, but I found we all have a bent and some people's bent is to le leadership development. And I've got some stars and this is their time to shine, but there's others. It's not their bent and left to their own devices it gets forgotten about. So that's the power of an, a meeting that has accountability, focus, and training. So good. So good. What, what are some of the wins that, uh, that you've seen as you've implemented the leadership pipeline over the past few years? Just give us some examples of some wins. I mean, one of them is 73 uh, yeah. leaders who are being apprenticed yeah. and have yeah. been apprenticed, that sort of thing. But what, what are some other wins that? Uh, yeah. Can okay, great. Look, I would say a couple of wins. I would think where we've been on this journey of pushing the developer, um, the developers into the pipeline. So at the start, the directors are developing the coaches and the leaders uh, simultaneously. You know, it's kind of like, this is how we're going to get it done. But one of the wins I think is if a ministry area can get leaders developing leaders, coaches developing coaches and directors developing directors, that's, I would say that mindset shift is probably the big shift to, to make. And you, you presented it clearly. We've had to keep rewatching some stuff of yours, talking about the, the Starbucks model that you shared with us when you were here, yeah. but that the, you know, leaders who develop other leaders become better leaders. So why rob the people in your area of the, the opportunity? I've got a friend who's into martial arts and he said, when I went to the class, I learned and it was pretty good. But when I had to take the class, I really learned. And so I think that principle, so that, that to me is a win where I see a group leader developing other group leaders and they're not on staff. They don't consider themselves a superstar leader or even a ministry person. That's a, that's a real big win for, for us. So it's sort of the empowering of, of great leaders out there. Uh, another win I would say is the reluctant leaders uh, who even the word leader, like, oh, I'm not a leader, I'm not a leader. So kind of simplifying that, you use some language with our team. Uh, a leader is just someone who helps people take their next step. So really, I think the some people who, they think leadership's a personality. Yeah. They And it's a, a choleric, tell people what to do or charismatic personality. But to see some people who who aren't like that, but they've got good people skills. They, they attract people and giving them the actual competencies to, you know, quite specifically to develop leaders. That's been a great win. So I can think of some of the leaders on our, in our church, on our team who have really, that's been a win. And, and, and it's like, Oh, you're, I would not. And this is where my old model of looking for someone who's a natural gifted kind of leader. Cause I can, you would have them. overlooked them. Yeah. I would have overlooked them, but now they're rising up. The third win Okay, I've just come this morning. It's from a what we call a marketplace breakfast. And what's really awesome is a number of the business people in our church who have been through apprenticing in different levels of, of uh, some of them who are leaders and coaches, and they're running huddles a specific kind of way that, you know, the, the five C's, they've, they've, we've embedded that. Well, they're doing that in their business and they've developed competencies for the levels and layers of their business. And now they are getting up and saying my, you know, to other business people, my business, I just do what I've learned at church, both, <laughs> both through the leadership pipeline and apprenticing, but through all the different things that we do at church, but because it's so structured, clear, they see the playbook, they know what we're doing. It's not hidden. They're like, I've got my own work playbook. I've got a vision statement for it for my business, like the church has got a vision statement. I've got a I've got a pipeline in my business, like the church has got a pipeline. So there's some of the great wins that we've had. Unreal. That is that is so encouraging. That, that, <clears throat> one of the biggest wins I look for, and I think it's one of the marks of a model leadership development church, is when you've got volunteer leaders reproducing leaders. Yes, yes, that's the win, isn't it? It is the win. It's not all staff doing it. Yeah. It's you got volunteer leaders doing it too. I love that. All right. So 
what's been the biggest challenge for your staff in implementing the leadership pipeline? A lot of times senior pastors are going to be excited about it, but the staff doesn't really implement. What's been some of the challenges you faced with, with your staff? Uh, look, I think, I think the challenge for many church staff is, is there's a, there can be a sense of I've got so much to do. You know, and whether it's a pastor who doesn't have many staff, so you're a senior pastor and and your team are all volunteers, or there's one or two staff, or whether it's whether it's a pastor with staff who all wear different hats and they're never sure what hat. So I'd say the big challenge has been okay, in church life, Sunday's coming like a freight train. And we're getting ready for Sunday, or we're recovering from Sunday, or we're getting ready for Sunday. So so there's an urgency to the weekly the weekly meeting services uh, that we run. Uh, then there's the pastoral crises. So they can just come up and there's an urgency to those areas. Often we don't have enough of the volunteers we need. So, you know, pastoral team staff uh, covering different territories. So, so being able to strategically focus on leadership development and give it the attention it deserves even though you might have a mental ascent, it's important, but, but really be able to go, okay, am I doing the important or responding to the urgent? Am I, so I would say that uh, the team would, and that's where I say we kind of maybe paused or drifted for a, a period of time. And that related to me giving it focus and energy. So that would be probably the number one challenge is that some people are drawn to it and some people they won't be drawn to it because of everything that's going on. So I try and what I've tried to do to fix that with, with team members who are more inclined to managing staff or more inclined to just responding or just they've got so much on their plate is say, start your week, uh, have an hour or two on a Monday morning and read one of Max books or listen to our stuff or read the playbook and just put your head at the start of the week into leadership development it's it's really important for you so that's i'd say that's been the probably the the biggest challenge for us sometimes need often means that we race people before we should we got a lot better at that but yeah so we're, so that would probably be the biggest challenge that we've had keeping the focus i love that advice it, you know hey the very beginning of your week because if you start with the urgent, yeah. you're going to spend your week in the urgent. Yeah. Don't you know? start with emails. Don't start yeah. with emails. Don't start with emails. So start mm. with that, which is important. Yes. And it, it right side, it right fits your mind. Yes. To, oh my goodness. I love that. That's it. Yeah, I, I, I think that that whole principle of what you read or listen to will set the, the focus. You know, Jesus said, if your eyes are good, your heart will be good. It's your focus. So I'm, I look on my day off. I often try to listen to a podcast about marriage or family to set my focus in that zone because I'm a driven leader and I don't, I'm trying to switch off. So I, I've found that key of listen or read something that will direct where you want to be focusing. So good. So good. All right. So what we talked about staff, talk to me about the response you've received from your volunteer leaders uh, in this new approach to leadership development. How have they responded? Look, it's been a mixture initially. So, and I think that's why I said that the public thing, I think anyone who thinks of something new, uh, there's, there's often a resistance to something new, particularly in church people, for whatever reason. Uh, I think the the idea of even the, the name a leadership pipeline for people can feel corporate. Yeah. So that can, you know, we, we have a, a saying, we want to be a leadership factory. And there are some people who are just like, well, what are we, a sausage factory? You know, <laughs> but that's, I'm, I'm creating a culture that our church raises leaders because leaders are disciple makers and our goal, our vision is to make disciples. So, so I think that there's that a natural resistance to it. And you were great with this Mac with us at the start. And it's really load in on the top 20% of your leaders who are on board, who are, who can capture the culture, the why, the heart. So I would say, uh, that so some people we've had to you know not talk publicly about how awesome this is hey we just love to develop you 
Uh, they don't even know it's part of the leadership pipeline. Can I meet with you six or eight times, et cetera, because we see this gift in you. We want to help you, you know. So it's it's probably been a little more of a subtle behind the scenes approach. I've mentioned what we've done as a church. Yeah. I've talked about it. But I think it's one of those things where the proof's in the pudding. So yeah. to be able to stand up, I stood up with our volunteers last night and just said, hey, guys, we're, we're, we're crushing it. 77 across two locations, new leaders have been apprenticed, or et cetera, et cetera. And then suddenly people are like, oh, okay, this is not a new idea that, that one, we should get on board with. This is something that's happening. And hopefully people are going, well, why haven't I been apprenticed? Yeah. You know, so yeah. trying to, so that's been the, a groundswell approach. I think r- realizing that, that a, some people don't like the leader word. They don't see themselves as a leader. They have a mental yeah. blockage to it. Um, some people don't like even some of the language or change or new wine skins. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I love that approach though. It's so wise. It, it, not standing up and announcing, Hey, we got a whole new leadership development program because it makes it feel like a program. Yeah. Versus yeah. a lifestyle and, yes. and a, a personalized approach. And so yes. it's so smart to keep it subtle. And now you're at a point where you can't really keep it subtle because yeah. it, the, the fruit is on the trees and people are seeing it and they're going, That's what is right. this? What is That's this? right. <laughs> well, I mean, as we brought you out and it, you spoke to our volunteers the first time. So, you know, there's been moments where, Hey, this is what we're doing, but it, you know, and, but that would be, less than on not on Sundays, more right. behind the weeks and more with uh, your behind leaders, the scenes and more leaders. absolutely more with our leaders. Yeah. 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 Uh, hey, one more question. What, what final word of advice would you give a senior pastor when it comes to uh, leadership development, leadership pipeline? What, what's a final word of, word of advice? Yeah, look, uh, I, I, you know, this is going to sound weird, Mac, but you are a gift to the body of Christ in your your what you do, your your passion for people, your heart for the gospel to to in, to expand the gospel around the world. So that I think there's a spirit on you, and I say that in a sense, there's an anointing on you for developing leaders, for discipling people. And so I think I, my advice would be just immerse, immerse into what you're doing, immerse into the books that you've written, the videos that you produce. Get, in, get into the coaching groups. So the mistake, I've, I saw people make it where people will come in, watch a little bit and go, oh, I get it, I get it. But then make this, the mistake of it's a program and I'm overlaying what you're talking about over the top of what they already do yeah. and making it more complicated with more layers rather than stripping it back and really from the inside out changing. So I would say, Take three, six months, you know, to really immerse yourself as a senior leader and then continually talk, listen, be part of groups, whatever it is of, of what you're doing to keep the motivation and upskilling so that really ultimately you could you could kind of be a leadership pipeline coach for other churches because it's embedded in you. So that's, mm. you know, don't, don't think, oh, we did that for six months or we did that for 12 months. I think any culture to build genuinely, and you know it's culture when it happens in your church without you having to teach or motivate people towards it, it's culture. Yeah. So it's probably realistically a seven-year journey to build a culture in a church. So just stay, stay persistent, stay immersed. As, as a senior pastor and leader and, let, and take your team into that zone. I hope everybody caught that. It's, it, it, you have a culture when you no longer have to, how did you say that? You no longer well, you have, don't have to, to preach or teach about it. It's, it's, in be, people, it's people's behavior without yeah. having to be reminded. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Love that. So good. And uh, you guys, if you're listening and you need some help and you're looking for a tool, just go to the description below this video. I've got something called uh, Jumpstart Your Leadership Development. It's five free training sessions you can use with your staff uh, one at a time. Watch these videos and it'll just help you jumpstart leader, your leadership development. It's absolutely free. So uh, go to the description and check that out. Uh, John, it has been been a joy talking to you today. You have uh, given us you, some phenomenal things to chew on, to walk away, some really practical stuff. 
How can people uh, learn more about you and uh, C3 Powerhouse? How can they find you? Sure. That, well, they can, I've got a website, pastorjohnpierce.com. They can check that out. Uh, so one thing we've been doing this year, Mac, our theme for the year is Brilliant Disciple Makers. So I do a fortnightly podcast targeted at connect group leaders, team leaders, and new Christian leaders, uh, really, because a lot of leadership podcasts are macro, culture, strategy, vision, you know, that kind of world. So we've done this one really targeted uh, at connect group at group leaders. So it's at that sort of grassroots level of leadership, very practical. Uh, there's a little, you'll, you'll listen to this, this couple of episodes we're doing at the moment have quite a leadership pipeline edge to them. So yeah, if, if that's a useful tool, jump on that and uh, hopefully, hopefully we can help. Fantastic. And also, guys, don't forget, check out his book as well on Amazon. Uh, the name of the book is The Wheels, the Wheels of, of Financial Blessing. Financial Blessing, John Pierce. So check that out. We'll put that in the description, a link to that as well. So, John, thanks again for joining me and uh, love you Total guys. pleasure, Mac. Love C3 Powerhouse. Love all you're doing, buddy. Thanks for your time.